headed to, ooh, I don't know where we're headed. We are headed to Hug Point State Park, I think it's called. It's like 10 minutes down from Cannon Beach South and we're gonna go there before we head to Oswald West State Park where I'm meeting Julia to do a photo shoot. Um, hopefully two photo shoots, but we will see. I'm gonna be using my 50mm 1.2 for the portraits and then hopefully also get a chance to experiment with the 11 to 16 millimeter for some wide angle shots. So I'll see you there. So my setup right now, I'm trying to get a shot of this water but smooth it out. So essentially what that means is instead of seeing the choppy waves, it'll all just be kind of one like fog. Um, so this is my setup right now. Oh, okay. So I have my 11 to 16 millimeter 2.8 and then I've got my graduated neutral density filter and this one here which is the regular neutral density filter. Um, this is the Lee filter set if you are wondering. And there's just like an adapter to hold it all in place on my lens. And then as for settings, I've got it set on 30 second exposure time, ISO 1250, which is pretty high, but it's super sunny outside as you can see. And then F number is at 5.6, manual focused to that rock right there. And even though there's kids in the shot, which I'm a little annoyed about, it's fine, it's fine, because they'll all blur out in the end. Okay, that's just annoying. My dude, whatever, it's fine. Oh god, I am at, where am I? Short Sands Beach, I think that's what it's called. Um, and I'm gonna meet my model here in about an hour, half an hour now actually. But let me just address some of the problems here. My key concern is the lighting right now. If you can see, let me turn you around. This is what the beach looks like. It's gorgeous, but it's not cloudy. <laughs> and I know a lot of people think that really really sunny is good for shoots but it's really not because see this is direct light and it's causing really harsh shadows on my face and really harsh light versus this is backlit and this is a lot better for um, portraits because it evens out the facial features doesn't create unflattering shadows and this is what is ideal but it would be best if it was cloudy because then I could get even light all around and I could balance out the background too but We'll see how this plays out. There's a lot of wildflowers here and like driftwood and there's this creek here leading out to the ocean. So I think we can take advantage of that and then there's that huge piece of driftwood there. So hopefully we'll, we can make it work. We'll see. I know I want to do a photo shoot today, but I'm not sure where I want to do it yet. I'm thinking the beach right in front of our house, or not house, in front of our hotel, is really nice, but the only problem is it gets really crowded, and if we wait until around high tide, there's not a lot of like rock features that I can photograph against. Um, and then the whole point of coming to the west coast for these kinds of beaches is the rock features. Like east coast beaches, we have like the nice <laughs> the nice beaches but we don't really have cliffs in the distance or rocks at least not like in the Virginia area so I really want to take advantage of this kind of scenery for my shoots also like the driftwood is really unique 
and things like that so we will see how that goes but hopefully that'll be around sunset and yesterday the sunset um, wasn't spectacular I've seen a lot better ones here out in the west coast so I'm hoping today the sunset is gonna be a lot more dramatic and a lot nicer hopefully it won't be too cloudy because we also want to go see like the stars and photograph the stars at night so yeah it's so nice to just kind of sit out here and relax in the morning because it's not crowded on the beach yet and it's just so peaceful it's so peaceful okay I'm gonna go back inside and get ready and we are going to head to bicycles okay pod to extend the camera so this is gonna be a little bit closer to me but it's okay it's so beautiful in Oregon I just love the West Coast beaches like it's 60 to like 60 degrees <laughs> cannot speak English it's like 60 degrees here so beautiful light ocean breeze and it's just the perfect weather like East Coast beaches are really nice and all but they're always so crowded there's like a billion people on the beach, it's like 100 degrees, sun shining down bright. But this, look at it! Where are you gonna find something like this on the east coast? Or these cliffs? Nowhere! Nowhere! I was like raised on the east coast, but I will always... I'm sorry, west coast is best coast. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. Also, the tide is coming in fast, you can see. So, I'm trying to not get my... <gasps> Look at the seagull! Should we go chase it? Wait, so there it is. I think we should go chase it before the tide comes in. Come here, seagull! Hello, seagull! So, the last time I was in Oregon, I discovered these tiny little jellyfish. Um, they don't have stingers but they're like everywhere and they're super cute. I will show you. Look how small they are. And you can pick them up too. And they're so small and squishy. Look how small it is. I don't know if you can see it. Let me rinse it off. But they're really, I don't remember what they're called, but they're super, super small. Oh no. They're super small and squishy and they always get washed up on shore. So when I was younger, I used to just go collect them and throw them back in the water, which is what I'm doing now. And my dad is taking some macro shots of them. See? So we're outside and we're getting some pictures of the Milky Way. You can't see it because the quality of this camera isn't good, but above us is just you can almost see it with your bare eye, the Milky Way, and there's so many stars out here at night. So this is what we're doing right now. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna keep going trial and error until we get it right. Halfway through a bottle, baby. Today, we are going to, I never know where we're going. We're going to the tide pools right now. It's like 9 a.m. So hopefully there'll still be a lot of sea life to see and things like that and I'll bring you with me of course and then we're going to go back to Hug Point because last time we got there and it was already high tide so we couldn't go see the little waterfall and the other caves on the other side of the rock so we're gonna go back to Hug Point and try to see that um, what else we might try to see the Milky Way again today but it's like actually cloudy today which is good for photography but it's not good for Milky Way so I don't think we're gonna be able to see it again tonight so that was fun seeing yesterday. I had tons of stories from that, which I'll update on you, update to you later. I can't speak in words. Um, but yeah, so let's go to the tide pool. We're at this little cove placey there. The tide had come up there. That's where the parking lot was on that side. And there's all these like caves here. 
and little alcoves. This is why you should stick around, even after the sun sets, because there's a huge wall of clouds there that the sun went behind and it's not really illuminating anything like those orange sunsets that you'll usually see. But back there, there's like fog, that beautiful fog. And then over on this side, you got those clouds forming here, that dip. That's gonna be really pretty. And this whole area here, gonna light up orange when the sun gets a little bit lower. So, <laughs> this was good because I was really disappointed at first because I thought we had missed our last chance at a really nice sunset, but the texture in the sky right now is unbelievable. And this camera isn't really picking it up, but I got it on this. I'm using the 11 to 16 millimeter for this because it's super wide angle. Um, and yeah. So I usually hate showing pictures back of the camera because I haven't gotten a chance to post-process it, but these are some of the images I'm getting from this lighting here. And even though it's not that bright orange, you'll see, I think we're gonna get that soon. And just like, look at that texture in the sky. That's what you're really looking for with photography. Color matters a lot too, but texture like this, this is just out of this world. That fog is just surreal. If you can, oh, I can't balance this. I'm trying to zoom in. That fog there is just unreal. So we're gonna try to get some more shots here. You can see that orange is really starting to brighten up, get more intense. And that's Haystack Rock, in case you're wondering. And then, I forget what those are called. They're like the needles or something like that. I'm trying to flip on this thing. But I'm really glad we stuck around. This is only like a half a mile walk from our hotel, so it's really convenient. Pilot Butte, which is one of the kind of Butte lookout points um, in Bend. By the way, we're in Bend, Oregon now, <laughs> not in Cannon Beach anymore, but there's a lot of wildfires happening over here. Um, the sky is just, you can see all the smoke. That's all smoke. See, clear sky over there, smoke here, and it's just like that's the sun. So it kind of worries me for the eclipse because I don't know how it's going to affect if we're going to be able to to actually even see the eclipse but we're driving north about a mile north to Mad Madras Mad Mad I don't know how to pronounce it but we're going north so hopefully it's not as smoky up there so yeah okay so I didn't really get a chance to vlog today at all because we didn't really do much um the main thing it's just that I'm really worried about the fires that are moving in because basically right now when you go outside it just smells like a constant barbecue and it's actually raining like little bits of ash everywhere and oh, it's like it concerns me greatly and also the whole horizon is basically just smoke like you can barely see the sun through it it's just it's kind of scary in a way. I'm also, I know I've said this before, but I'm concerned about how it's gonna affect the eclipse because even though we're headed north to Madras, even though we're heading north about an hour to view the eclipse, I don't know if you'll still be able to see the smoke because right now I don't actually know how far away these fires are from Bend. Um, I know they're south of us, but I don't know how far south. They haven't really issued any warnings yet, but I've seen a lot of firemen coming in and out of our hotel, um, like talking to the manager downstairs, which like really stresses me out, but it's okay. Hopefully things are okay. We're only here until Tuesday, I think. So who knows, but I just don't wanna have to evacuate this area. I don't think we will. I don't think the fire is gonna come all the way to Bend, but. We shall see. Um, I keep looking out at the distance because I'm like looking at the smoke, but yeah, okay. I'm gonna stop rambling and I'll catch up with you tomorrow because hopefully tomorrow will be way more interesting. And yeah, I will, I will stop talking now. <laughs> Goodbye.
we are 15 hours away from the total eclipse happening and we are in the middle of preparing all of our camera gear to take with us. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what we have here. So, all right, as far as the camera bodies, we have a 70D, which is my camera. Um, and on this, we're gonna be putting the 16 to 300 millimeter lens. And then we're also bringing the 5D Mark IV. And on that, we're gonna be putting the 600 millimeter. This is the Sigma 600 millimeter. Um, and then to filter out a lot of the light so that we don't fry our sensors on the cameras when we're pointing it at the sun, we have two Lee filter sets. Um, we have, let me see, this one which has two filters in it with the 15 stop and the 6 stop and then we also have a single 20 stop filter. So those two should be enough for our cameras so that we don't burn out our cameras and burn the plastic and destroy them because they're very expensive. Um, and then of course I'm bringing my vlogging camera with me to capture it. I don't think I'll be able to video the actual eclipse happening, maybe during totality, we'll see. But then my phone is here, purse, backpack. And I think that's it. So we're out here in Madras and we stayed the night over here in our car because um, we got here around 2 a.m. But I'll show you our final setup. The eclipse is in about three hours. So these are our cameras. We got our 70D here. Final setup is with the 16 to 300, uh, 20 stops. And then we also got our remote here so that we don't shake the camera too much. And basically I've framed it. I don't know if you can see anything right now. I framed it so that the sun, can you see that? It's right there. It's obviously moving, um, so I'm gonna have to readjust later. But settings, ISO is at 1000, F8, no, ISO is at 1600, F8, shutter speed 1000. Um, I manual focused it so that the edge of the sun was sharp. 5D Mark IV over here with the 600 millimeter, 21 stop filters, and another remote. So. We'll update you later. I'll be setting my camera up down here, pointing that way to help capture the eclipse from another angle. And then I'll probably be videoing it with this camera and the 5D Mark IV will be taking pictures on. Also, it's just really cold in Madras. <laughs> That's why I look like a hobo. Okay. <laughs> anymore I'm in Williamsburg but thank you for watching the video if you liked it please subscribe like comment do whatever you want I don't know follow my Instagram and yeah I'll see you next time bye bye